Hey, Toka. Oh, hey, Darson. What's up? You like Mario, right? Yeah, I love Mario. You like RPGs, right? Um, I mean, yeah, it's okay, but... You like rabbits, right? Um, no. Not at all, actually. Well, lucky for you, Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battles came out. I didn't ask for this. No one did. Salutations and welcome to The Toka Show, where today, Mario Rabbids has taken the world by storm! Or maybe nobody likes it. I really don't know. I try to stay away from reviews of games that I haven't reviewed myself personally yet. So, for all I know, maybe everyone hates this game. I do know though that it did garner a ton of hype at E3 this year where it was announced. But is it actually good? Well, wonder no more, for I have the answer to the question I just asked for you. The rabbits are these retarded bunnies. Oh, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Really retarded bunnies that mostly appear in Ubisoft party games. I don't know, I've only played like 10 minutes of one. And Mario is a multi-billion dollar franchise of almost exclusively outstanding games. And some of my favorite games of all time. Everybody loves Mario. I love Mario. My cat loves Mario. The neighbor's cat loves Mario. This puppy loves Mario. This baby loves Mario. I'm not a baby. My dentist loves Mario. You like Mario, right? So you can imagine the surprise everyone had when Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle was announced at this year's E3. Heck, I was surprised, but I was also excited, and I still am. And now the game is out, and it's time to see if our excitement was well spent. The game's story is a little hard to explain, but I'll try my best. It begins with a cutscene of an unnamed character who is working on a device that can combine objects together. The device isn't finished, however, and when the inventor leaves the room, the rabbits show up in a time-traveling washing machine. Look, man, I'm not gonna touch the obviously deep lore of the rabbits' universe. I'm just telling it like it is. After causing a general ruckus, one of the rabbits grabs the headset and starts combining things willy-nilly, combining some rabbits with Mario posters and toys Toys, creating rabid versions of some Mario characters, like Luigi, Peach, and of course Mario. The headset then malfunctions and combines the entire room into one of Mario's posters, corrupting a lot of the rabbits and creating a whole world that's half Mushroom Kingdom and half Bedroom. So it's up to Mario, a robot guide named Bimo, and their newfound rabid friends to find and stop the corrupted rabbits and the headset rabid. There, did I do a good job? Everyone understand the story? No questions? Good, let's move on. Honestly, this is a very clever and interesting narrative in my opinion. It makes just enough sense for me to accept it, and it's goofy enough to make me not question the existence of the rabbits in this project. The game looks pretty good too. It's very colorful, inviting, and the environments have so much detail and little objects added to keep you visually engaged. And the music, of course, is amazing. And I say of course because the legendary Grant Kirkhope did the music for this game. The same composer who did Banjo-Kazooie, Hook Snuka, and Viva Pinata, among others. However, I would say some of the music sounds strikingly similar to that of Banjo-Kazooie, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because the Banjo soundtrack is one of my favorites of all time. But it's worth pointing out. And even though that's all well and good, what is really interesting about this game is the gameplay. The style of gameplay is a tactical turn-based RPG, or at least that's what Google calls it. I, however, would describe it as a game where you take turns with the enemies, moving your team members to tactical areas and attacking in different ways. Eh. Yeah, let's just go with tactical turn-based RPG. Basically, it's a turn-based game like Pokemon or Final Fantasy, but there is also movement involved. So not only do you choose what attacks to do and when to do them, there are also movements around a map, barricades, and high grounds, where you are protected more or have better chances of hurting your enemy depending on where you are. For example, when an enemy is behind cover, you have 0% chance of hitting them with your weapon. If they are behind half cover, you have 50% chance of hitting them with your weapon. However, if you can maneuver your character behind or to the side, of these covers, you have a 100% chance of hitting them. This also works vice versa. Yikes! 
This is a ton more technical information than you guys are used to, so we're just gonna hit the pause button on this review for a second and go review a more simpler game. Greetings and salutations and welcome to The Toka Show, where we will be reviewing a much simpler game that you may have heard of. Pong! Pong is a new indie game that was made in the 1980s. Some people say it was the first video game ever made. Those people would be wrong. That title belongs to spelling out vulgar words on a calculator. Pong is a game where you play the role of Stick, who is waging a war on this guy, who is also named Stick. The gameplay consists of moving up and down, hitting this ball, and trying to keep it from going behind your stick dude. My main problem with this game is that it's really basic. The visuals are very lacking and the music is non-existent. And other than the previously mentioned ball smacking, there's nothing else to this game. It's very disappointing when you compare this game to something like Destiny 2, which has a significant amount of content put into it when compared to Pong. Basically, if you had to choose between buying Pong or Destiny 2, I'd spend my money on Destiny 2. And now you know which game to buy this month. You're welcome. The strategy of Mario Rabbids isn't just limited to attacks, though. There are many different things you can do to maximize your turns. Sometimes you can accomplish a ton in a single turn. All of these things, as well as many different unique enemy types, makes the combat always feel fresh and fun in Mario Rabbids. The AI is oftentimes frustratingly smart and forces you as a player to think a few steps ahead in order to survive. It's really something special and just genuinely super fun. But the battles are only half the game. The other half is traveling from battle to battle, exploring the world. This is where I felt the game fell a little short. While there are a few puzzles to solve and secrets to find while traversing the world, none of them are actually hard to solve or find. There are collectibles to find, but you can get them all without even really trying. This makes the game feel kind of lacking in the content area. Because I was enjoying the game so much, I wanted to dive deeper into it and grow my team members, or do side quests, or collect items, or something to add a little more content. But there's just not much to dive into here. There is some customizing with your team members' abilities and weapons, but you find enough skill points and cash to upgrade everyone fully by the end of the game. There's no need for any extra work. And there are one or two extra battles in each world, and that's something, but I wanted a little more variety. I also had a lot of problems with the camera. It always seemed to be too close to my characters, and you can't adjust how far or close it is. And during battles, the camera can only be set to one of four positions making for some really awkward angles. Now when I was playing Mario Rabbids, I was having a hard time deciding whether or not it was a good game or not. I mean, I was having a ton of fun with it, but there was something lacking for me in the game, and I couldn't pinpoint why. But then it hit me. The writing. In all the other Mario RPGs, such as Paper Mario and the Mario & Luigi saga, the writing has always been very clever and well-written, to the point where I always looked forward to the next bit of dialogue. In Mario Rabbids, however, the clever writing has taken a backseat to the silly nature of the Rabbids, which I'm not necessarily complaining about. I actually found a lot of the physical humor to be funny sometimes, but my main problem is in the writing itself. It's very basic and not clever at all. It's very hard for me to explain, but when you read the dialogue in this game, you can tell it's supposed to be funny, but it just isn't. Instead of making clever jokes and hidden references to the Mario and Rabbids franchises, the writing resorts to very basic puns and humor you would only find funny if you were born in the 50s. But it's not just the humor, the game almost feels like it knows the Rabbids aren't as popular as Mario, and instead of celebrating both franchises, it quite literally goes, hey, the Rabbids are cool too, don't forget the Rabbids, please, please love the Rabbids, please. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle isn't a great game. The writing, quite frankly, is terrible, the camera has a lot of issues, and there isn't much diversity in the game, but I still had a lot of fun with it, and I thoroughly enjoyed every second of it. If you're a diehard Mario fan, you'll love this game, and if the gameplay looks interesting, you'll also have a lot of fun with it. Other than that, I can't really recommend this game. But hey, maybe they'll make Mario Rabbids 2 and they'll fix all these issues. Here's hoping. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving that bell a little ding a ling 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 ding a dong So then you are notified for whenever my new videos come out, which is every Tuesday and Saturday by the way. Also follow me on Twitter because I tweet. And you can follow those tweets and respond to them. Bye.